Okay, so this is the JSFX Hot Toddy. So this is a low gain transparent overdrive, uh, loosely based on the Paul Cochran Tinny, mm -hmm. uh, but replacing all your boring IC op amps with discrete op amps, uh, and then built using kind of high quality audio parts. Simple controls, so level uh, level gain, bass, treble. Yeah. Uh, passive tone controls, and much like the Timmy, the bass is pre-clipping. So as you adjust the bass and increase the bass, it adjusts how it affects the clipping as well. And then the treble is passive and in between two stages, so it's kind of like a classic low pass filter. How does that differ to the? Um, the original circuit, so with the, the discrete off amps, is it? Yeah, so that's a, the major, that is the major difference, the discrete off amps, which give it a bit more feel, a bit more kind of better dynamic response. Um, a bit more, I hate the phrase openness, because it's that kind of dancing about architecture phrase, but it's, it is, it's a more open tone, and especially when you're playing, the feel of it springs back more. Uh, so this is the Jesse FX Rapper. Uh, this is a high headroom, high voltage take on the classic rat circuit. Mm -hmm. So again, same uh, gain level treble, which was the old tone control, and then an additional bass control. And it's the same style of bass control as the Hot Toddy and Timmy, where it's uh, pre-clipping, and then as you adjust it, it kind of tight. So you can kind of tighten up the distortion with the bass down, or as you increase it, it will blow out the distortion a bit more. So you can get those kind of classic high-gain fuzz tones, which the rap kind of is famous for. Once you get the gain, yeah, yeah. pass like. It's, so it sits somewhere between the 1981 DRV and an old school rat in terms of the gain. So completely cleans up with the gain down and then as you increase the gain, it goes through quite a like, low gain. Um, again, almost transparent. It's not as transparent as things like Hot Toddy, but it's still, um, yeah, huge. And then as it gets up, you get into like, classic 70s rock distortion and all the way up it gets into that big fuzz. Uh, that we all know and love. The big thing with it was the headroom, so it runs on the same charge pump chip and approach as the classic Plum Sentinel, where it's a normal 9 volt input. Uh, all of these normal 9 volt inputs, and then inside is a chip which doubles the voltage and then also inverts it so you get plus, so you go from 9 volt to the ground and you go to plus 18 to minus 9. So you end up with three times as much headroom, um, which again all plays into how it feels. So when you dig in, it's a suit for, for a rat. I mean, they are dynamic, but this is ultra dynamic. You know, you can really lay off and it softens up and then you really dig in and you get that classic rat clipping. This is the Tone Flexor. Sound uh, decided to reissue the 
a legendary tone bender in a big box. And they decided to rework the circuit, so instead of the classic three domain transistors, they replaced it with a single IC op amp and reworked it in such a way that it was meant to have the same tone as those classic tone benders and the same kind of sound, uh, but solved a lot of the issues. You know, Germanian transistors are hard to get hold of and they're expensive. And say if you buy 10, you might throw away three because they're junk. Yeah. Uh, whereas the op amps, you know, a bit more um, consistent. Fuzzes, it has to be first in the chain uh, because it needs the high impedance low from a guitar, uh, which op amps you know, are less fussy about. So, with this, you can put it anywhere in the chain, it will work. Most of them are four knobs. I went down a four knob route for some reason. Uh, but this is again classic fuzz level tone, but then a clean blend, uh, which has become quite cool, on, especially on fuzz pedals. And I yeah. think part of that's bass players, where bassists love a fuzz tone, and being able to have some of that clean blend means you keep your bass, keep your dynamics. And again, it's all about complementing your tone rather than in kind of imposing the sound of the pedal over your tone. Fuzz control goes from complete like crystal clean and as you increase it, it goes through quite a thick kind of overdrive and then right at the end it kind of goes into that big classic tone bender fuzz. This is the blue slinger. Blue Slinger. I think it's, it is Blue Slinger, um, but I, mean, I feel like I just have two S's, but two S's look wrong. This is a cross between uh, the Boss Blues Driver and the Marshall Blues Breaker. And then there's kind of Dumble in a Box style pedals. Yeah. Um, and it's completely geared towards low gain, bluesy tones. Standard knobs, so obviously level tone gain. Mm -hmm. But what kind of sets it apart or what opens it up a bit are the two switches. So we've got a bright switch and a deep switch. The bright switch is the amount of treble content and as you adjust the gain, the treble changes. So with low gain, it's quite dark, and then as you increase the gain, it gets quite bright, uh, partly because of the clipping, partly because of how the control works. And so being able to adjust how much treble content you've got before shaking with the tone control uh, is a godsend. So you know, you can have it quite low, have the gain low, big full sound, and still have plenty of treble with it in the middle. Or if you've got the gain up quite high and you put it into the down position, that's the darkest position, it really softens up that treble. And you get that's where you kind of get the classic like uh, Marshall in the Box sounds, so, like the governor, those kind of higher gain things. switch is part of the clipping stage so in the middle it's uh, quite a balance I don't think it's too basic it's kind of balanced in the middle and then in the up position adds a little bit more bass and in the down position it adds a lot of bass so you know if you're using it with a Telecaster having that extra bass kind of fills out the sound but if you're using it with like an SG or a Les Paul or kind of thick humbuckers being able to thin out the low end again yeah, it gives you a bit more clarity
this is the GSA uh, one GSA one hundred. This is a Plex in a box, uh, which is very obvious given the aesthetics. <laughs> I love those. Not, I was gonna say high game marshal, but not. It's Plexi's like weird, like mid game marshal that sound, isn't it? Yeah. Um, Quite dynamic, but actually, um, it's 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 a game range where your your picking still counts. Yeah, isn't it? Well, I was going in my head every time I think Plexi, I think like Paul Kosov, um, Angus Young. I know it sounds weird, but Tom Morello. I don't know if Tom Morello is a Plexi player. I know he's a marshal player. But again, it's those tones where it's cleaner than you think it is, yeah. but it's still a distorted sound. Um, classic controls of level gain, tone, and the presence. Internally, it runs at 18 volts, so all of them are 9 volt in, and then this um, that has a magic inside which flips it, so you get plus 9 volts to minus 9 volts, so it sees it as 18 volts. Uh, quite dynamic. Yeah, it's a it's a it's a real doesn't it? Um, I mean, it does it does what you expect it to, um, but because of that height of room, again, it's the, the the feel and the the dynamics of your playing really come through. Mm -hmm. 